Hello out there to you. I've got a unit three perfect competition model FRQ practice question for you. All right. Tanika sells widgets in a perfectly competitive market. That means that all the products are the same, low barriers to entry. Market price for one widget is $14. $14. Let's start writing some stuff. It might help. Um, the marginal. Let me make that a little smaller there. Marginal revenue, of course, equals price, but that also equals 14. So that's important because our profit maximizing uh, amount is, is going to be found where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, or at least at the last unit where marginal revenue exceeds marginal cost. Okay, that's profit maximizing condition, or, or might even refer to as uh, the loss minimizing condition. Okay. Uh, fixed costs are twelve dollars. They've given us uh, variable cost. Okay, what is the average total cost? Is six unit. Okay, so to make this easier, I mean, what you could do is just jump to the, uh, you know, jump right to it and say, okay, well our total cost equal to why don't we just do it that way? Total variable cost plus fixed cost. So we know that the total variable cost at producing six is 300 and then 300 plus 12 so the total cost of producing six units is 312 we also know that average total cost is equal to total cost divided by should really be typing divided by quantity and so what that gives us in this case is 312 divided by 6, which I believe is 52 when I did that earlier, but uh, 312 divided by 6 is 52. So the answer to that first one is 52. And if you need to show your work, that's how to do it right there. But you could also calculate each each one, which I'm going to do because I, I kind of need it for the, the later uh, answers there. So uh, I've got total variable cost there. Sometimes it's written as TBC or just T or just VC. Uh, I'm going to do total cost. And total cost is just this plus the 12. So it's 12, 24, 37, 72. 132, 212, 312. Okay. And what is the first unit of output where diminishing marginal returns have begun? Okay, so now I'm going to calculate marginal cost. And so this is how I find this. Now, marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by the change in units. But the units are changing by one. So it's really just uh, you know, di divide the, the denominator is going to be one. So you're not going to change that. Don't have to worry about that. Um, you, you, now, total variable cost is what's changing. So actually, um, going from here to here or taking this number minus this number is 12. And this one is 13. OK, well, you can use the total cost column or you can use the total variable cost column. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, from here to here, it, the marginal cost is 12. From here to here, the marginal cost is 13. From here to here, the marginal cost is 35. Uh, either way, you want to do that. Okay. So then this is 60. And this is, it's, it's easier over here, actually. It's 80. Okay, so the first unit of output where diminishing marginal returns have begun, that's going to be this first unit. And the reason I know that is because after that first unit, the marginal cost starts to rise, and it continues to rise until I get to 6. So that's what you would want to say there. So you just say uh, that the second unit is 13, the third unit is 35, and it's increasing the more that this uh, firm produces. Okay. All right, next, uh, what profit or loss would it earn at its profit maximum? Maximum. So we want to find uh, this, OK? 
Okay, so marginal uh, marginal revenue is 14. So do I want to produce the first unit? Yes. Do I want to produce the second unit? Yes. Do I want to produce the third unit? No. Okay, so uh, I'm going to produce two units. That's our profit maximizing quantity. Okay, you can say why because that's the last unit where marginal revenue is higher than marginal cost. Okay, so you can say if you produce the third unit, the marginal cost is 35 and the marginal revenue stays at 14. So you wouldn't want to produce the third unit. Okay, uh, now show our work. Okay, well, uh, profit is found by calculating, let's write the formula here. We'll use pi for profit, total revenue minus total cost. So what you could do if you have time while you're answering this, you could just calculate total revenue right here. Uh, and so total revenue, by the way, is price times quantity. Okay, so we're just going to multiply everything by 14. So that's 14. That's 28. Uh, geez, what's 3 times 14? It's 42. Could have done that in my hand. 4 times 14. Should know this from football, right? Uh, is that 70? Am I right? Yeah. And that's 84. Okay. So those are our total revenue numbers. So when we're right here, uh, we know that producing two units will give us 28. How much will it cost us to produce two units? 37. 28 minus 37 is negative 9. So the answer to this one is negative 9. So it's negative 9. Right here. Would they continue to operate in the short run? Well, the answer is yes, but we need to explain how do we know that. So we know that because the firm will always produce when the price is above average variable cost. So you could just very easily calculate what the average variable cost is. Okay, uh, So we don't have an average variable cost when we don't produce anything. So we're just taking uh, average variable cost is found by calculating variable cost divided by quantity. So it would be 12 divided by 1, so it would be 12. And then 25 divided by 2 would be 12, 25. Uh, 60 divided by 3 is 20. That is 30. Uh, that is 40. And that is 50. So you would say that the market price is higher than the minimum of average variable cost. So yes, they would produce. The minimum would be uh, 12. So as long as the price is above 12, Firms will operate in the short run because uh, they don't lose as much as if they would if they shut down. So you can explain that. Will they stay in the market in the long run? So we'll stay in the market as long as the price is above average total cost. So the answer to this one is no. No, we would not. So what about average total cost? So we actually already have that formula over here. Um, and so we'll just go through that one. 24. 37 divided by 3 is, uh, what is that, like 18 point something? 37, oops, 37. It's really not divided by 3, one of the arts. It's 2, 18.5. That's what I thought. 18.5. And 72 divided by 3, you could probably do that in your head. I can't. That's 24. Uh, 132 divided by 4, 132 divided by 4 is 33, uh, 212 divided by 5, 42.4, and we already did that one, that's 52. Okay, so would they stay in the market in the long run? You would say no, they would exit the market because the price is staying lower than the minimum of average total cost. So they can't make a profit. So we would get out of get out of this market and go do something else. So you'd want to say 
uh, that they would exit, use the word exit on this one, or exit in the long run, uh, unless the price gets back up to $18.50, that would be the break even price. But as long as the price is below that, but above average variable cost, we're going to produce in the short run, but exit in the long run.